Welcome everybody back to Monday Night Raw and we are sold out coming for coming to you once again from this time we're coming live from Braunschweig Germany the Raw World Tour continues we were in Mexico last week and we are in Germany tonight as the charismatic enigma brother Nero Jeff Hardy makes his way to the ring what has Jeff Hardy got in store for uh, the fans here in Germany tonight of course last week Jeff Hardy losing to Cesaro in a backlash qualifier the world heavyweight title qualifier match so Jeff Hardy will face off though in the second chance battle royale for the Intercontinental Championship at backlash net in two weeks it looks like Jeff Hardy has some words for the fans here tonight. Remember, he wasn't pinned or submitted by Cesaro. Cesaro winning by a countout. So maybe that's what Jeff has on his mind. Maybe he wants um, to get some payback on Cesaro. And he has, it looks like he someone is getting on his nerves. I wonder... If that person backstage getting on Hardy's nerves is the same person who defeated him last week. Well, he's saying he'd be honoured to face the person in a match because they're imp impressive. He's already faced off against his house, so maybe he is talking about someone different, or maybe even he wants a rematch against Cesaro. And yes, it, indeed, it was Cesaro who he was on about. And he's saying Cesaro deserves a beatdown, and he's ready to take him down, so, and he's calling Cesaro down to the ring. So, of course, Jeff Hardy looking for a bit of payback from last week after getting counted out and costing himself a match. And here comes Cesaro. And as I was saying, Cesaro beating Jeff Hardy by a count out. Cesaro will challenge for the World's Heavyweight Championship at Backlash. Jeff Hardy will challenge for the Intercontinental Championship. And who knows, maybe... Jeff trying to get in the mind of Cesaro, maybe trying to set him up that if Cesaro wins the World Heavyweight title in two weeks at Backlash, maybe Jeff Hardy is putting his name in the hat saying, Cesaro, I want you win or lose. Or could go the other way, Jeff Hardy could walk out of Backlash with the Intercontinental Championship. Maybe Cesaro could be the first in line to challenge him. As now Cesaro taking shots at the WWE Universe here. Just flexing, showing off. I wonder what Jeff Hardy is to reply. You see Jeff Hardy bringing up. That Cesaro is one of his rivals because he, they're vying both for that one spot, that spot in the World Heavyweight title scene. Both men want to be World Heavyweight Champion. Well, Cesaro saying he doesn't even know why Jeff Hardy's out here, why Jeff Hardy is here on Monday Night Raw. Saying Jeff Hardy isn't a good wrestler as Cesaro. Saying Jeff Hardy should be a janitor. And I find that disrespectful. Jeff Hardy is one of the greatest wrestlers of all time, in my humble opinion. Of 
Jeff already saying he does. He's here to ascend to the top of the mountain. Oh, Cesaro saying to get McMahon, get Triple H, get the authority involved, get the booking committee, whatever you want to call him. Get, let's, hopefully the authority are watching them. Let's hope they do make a rematch between Jeff Hardy and Cesaro because last week they had a fantastic matchup that was uh, let down by the finish ending in a countdown. Wow, and Jeff Hardy now saying the match isn't going to happen tonight because Cesaro's not worth his time. Like, this is very confusing. Jeff Hardy's the one who called out Cesaro. But it looks like Jeff Hardy's trying to play mind games with the Swiss Superman and try to get into the head. Make Cesaro wait. But now Cesaro just saying that Jeff Hardy trying to avoid him, trying to get out of a rematch with Cesaro because he knows that Cesaro will once again get the victory. But I don't know, maybe if they do go at it again, I feel like Jeff Hardy could get the win. But you got, I kind of like the mind games Jeff Hardy playing. Getting in the head of Cesaro, calling out Cesaro. But then once Cesaro gets all angry, gets temper, make him wait, make him sit a week, make him sit two weeks. We don't know when this match will be made official. Jeff Hardy, he's saying he's out of here. He's going to party. And of course, Jeff Hardy make calls out Cesaro, but making Cesaro wait for the match. I hope that the authority do make that match official down the line. But we are going to continue on with Monday Night Raw as Ron, the truth killings, or truth, makes his way to the ring. And we mentioned how that match last week between Cesaro and uh, Jeff Hardy was the qualifier for the six pack challenge at Backlash. Of course, the loser is put into a second chance battle royale for the Intercontinental Championship. And our truth is looking too advanced to Backlash. Of course, this is a qualifying matchup. Our truth, former two time NWA World Heavyweight Champion, he knows how it feels to reach the top of the mountain to become the king of the mountain or truth wants to reach that mountain top again he feels like he is underlooked but um adam cole his opponent tonight cannot overlook or truth because as i didn't mention our truth two-time world heavyweight champion knows what it takes and wants to get back to that top and uh, he feels like he's been overlooked by everyone here. And this is his chance to w once again regain momentum and reach that main event status that we know he can. But Adam Cole is going to have something to say of that. And oh look at this. Typical Adam Cole fashion. He's not coming alone. He's flanked by the Raw Tag Team Champions. Red Dragon, Kyle O'Reilly, Bobby Fish and of course Adam Cole. Along with Roderick Strong, make of the undisputed air. And of course, Roddy will face off against Cruiserweight Champion Cedric Alexander later tonight. So he's probably backstage preparing for his match, and that's explaining his absence. But you gotta know Roderick Strong will be keeping an eye on things. And if things start to go downhill for Cole, O'Reilly, and Fish, that Roderick Strong won't be afraid to interfere on Adam Cole's behalf. So our truth is going to have to go through the Undisputed Era basically to get through to Backlash because you know O'Reilly and Fish will get involved if things don't go Cole's way. And we mentioned our truth's experience as a world champion. Adam Cole, of course, former three-time Ring of Honor champion, former NXT champion. He knows how to win gold. 
but he's always had someone by his side, whether it was the Kingdom in ROH, whether it was the Undisputed Era in NXT, and of course the Bullet Club and Ring of Honor as well. Adam Cole doesn't go alone, and of course he's not going alone tonight. You see Fish O'Reilly ready to get involved, staring down our truth. The crowd here getting behind our truth. And I, you got to love the underdog story of our truth. And I would love to see Truth do it. And you see Truth wisely getting out of the ring, trying to bait Adam Cole in. You see Cole follows him out. Truth getting back in. See Truth playing mind games with Cole. And it pays off because Truth gets that Irish whip off. And the big hip toss. Or Truth in control early on. Truth now picks up Cole. Snap mare takedown. And Truth goes to work on the uh, on Adam Cole with that elbow drop. Now stomping away at Adam Cole. Once again, Truth with the snap mare kick to the back of Cole. And Cole now is the one running out. And Truth taunting him, saying this is his ring. As Cole comes back in with a chop forearm. And now going after the leg. Figure four on All Truth. Is All Truth going to tap or will he escaped this figure four leg lock able to turn the momentum putting the pressure now on Adam Cole and Cole though able to escape but I don't know it looks like Truth decided to let go of it now Truth working over the arm of Adam Cole baby now Cole going to work on the midsection with those punches big close line from all truth call in trouble it's a big kick there by all truth but Adam Cole able to get a kick of his own onto truth truth now once again rolling out of the ring this time Adam Cole doesn't bait him out but true able to avoid that form as he was getting back into the ring now it has Adam Cole in trouble Bouncing his head off the turnbuckle now with those big foot punches to the skull of Adam Cole. Stomping away at Adam Cole is all truth. Now truth has Adam Cole where he wants him. Truth now picks up Cole. Going for a big suplex and he connects. Truth now picks up Cole. Once again looking for a suplex. But oh, drops him forward. That kind of reverse suplex. I don't really know what to call that. Just picking him up, dropping him, Adam Cole, stomach first down onto the mat. No, surprisingly, this match has been mainly in Truth's control early on. As he hits him with the big STO, take it down. Cole has struggled to get out of the gates. He tried reversing. Truth on many occasions as Truth once again just dropping him down from that suplex position. But once again, Cole able to get the kick. But can Cole build a bit of momentum? Finally, goes to work with those big punches, those big left hands of Adam Cole, and now stomping away at our Truth. Oh, big kind of brain buster. Falcon Arrow brain buster looks like. And once again, Truth rolling to the outside. Adam Cole calling him back in. Truth happy to oblige. Punching Cole across the face. But Cole able to turn the tide once again. Now Cole an elbow type. Truth pushes Cole away. And hits him with the big clothesline. Knocking down Adam Cole. But Cole's back up with the bicycle. Cole goes for the cover. One count only. All Truth kicks out. All Truth survives. Cole gone for the super kick. Our truth gets out of the way. That flat liner. Truth still going to work. Once again, suplex <clears throat> decides to drop Cole down stomach first, driving him into the mat. Big spin kick by our truth. Once again, truth in control. Going to the top rope. What has our truth got planned for Adam Cole? Big leg drop connects. You've got to feel like our truth can put Cole away. Maybe one big move is all that's needed. 
and our truth looking for that as he goes for the snapmare. Decides to work over Cole with that elbow. Picks up Adam Cole once again. For the big suplex. Surprise Truth didn't go for the cover off of that. But Adam Cole able to take down our truth. I connects with the super kick. Our truth is in trouble now. As Adam Cole now is the one going to the top rope. What has Cole got planned? Big super fly splash connects. Our truth in trouble. As you see O'Reilly and Fish cheering on Adam Cole. Super kick to the midsection. Cole in control. Sends our truth into the corner now does Adam Cole. Cole picking truth up onto the top turn buckle following up with a big arm drag off the top rope goes for the cover that could be a one only a one count or truth able to survive as call picks up truth and striking him across the back and fish and kyle o'reilly are loving it And Adam Cole now sending truth to the outside of the ring. Oh no, he's saying he's so smart. And just going to work, dropping that knee across the head of our truth, working him over on the outside. And now sends him back inside of the ring. Adam Cole in control. Cole. Picks up Truth, goes for that Insigori. Truth able to reverse and DDT. Or Truth able to turn the momentum once again. But Cole reversing that suplex with a knee, super kick, and dropping the knee pad. Last shot, last shot, knee. Adam Cole goes for the cover. This has to be it. Referee gets in position. One, two, three. The winner of this match. Adam Cole, baby! Adam Cole advancing to Backlash. And if he did have Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish at ringside, but I must admit, they didn't get involved as we look back at these highlights. They just were there to cheer him on, but you've got to think, if they weren't there, would all true have been able to get the win? Maybe they played a distraction just being there, but while well, actually getting involved, but they were there. And Cole does advance, but it's not over for True. He will be in that second chance battle royale for the Intercontinental Championship. And I wouldn't mean mind seeing our truth leave Backlash with the IC title after that great performance. But this man could very well be the world's heavyweight champion. And of course, Fish and O'Reilly already the tag team champions on dispute era looking for all the gold and maybe if Roddy Strong can pick up a win against the Cruiserweight champion here tonight he could receive a future title shot and speaking of the undisputed era this is taking home all the gold this is the team Fish and O'Reilly beat last week for the tag team titles the War Raiders are looking to get back to winning ways here tonight of course there's a bit of dissension between the Raiders as um, they kind of argued on who was going to start the matchup, but before, before the matchup last week, and maybe that miscommunication is what is the difference between them being tag team champions here tonight, and the undisputed era being the tag team champions. As Eric and Ivar make their way to the ring, as I mentioned earlier, looking to get back to winning ways. But you got to wonder, if they do not pick up the win here tonight, what does that mean for the Viking Raiders? There's already a bit of dissension, and if they do go on a losing streak, maybe what is next for the Raiders is in the back of both men's mind. But I hope they are able to work together tonight, because they are a great team. As they are getting the fans behind them with those war chants. And the Raiders look ready for a competition. And their opponents for tonight. Curtis Axel, Bo Dallas, the B team. 
course, two second generation superstars. Bud Alice, the son of IRS. And Curtis Axel, the son of Mr. Perfect. Kurt Henning. You, like, they will be overlooked, you gotta believe. A lot of the WWE Universe overlooked the talents of these two men. But they have the talent to back it up. They have the family lineage. Of course, both Alice, former NXT t champion. Curtis Axel, former tag team champion. Former intercontinental champion. Of course, these two men have held tag team gold together. And they may be looking to get tag team gold here on Raw with... A win here tonight, putting him in title consent contention. As it looks like it's going to be Curtis Axel and Ivar to start for their respective teams. As they go out, Ivar taking down Curtis Axel early on. Ivar with those problem blows to Axel. His big boot goes behind for that pump handle. Pump handle suplex by Ivar. As now Axel though fighting out, fighting back. Now it's Ivar sent into the corner of the B team. Axel goes to work with a chop, putting Ivar on the top rope. Ivar though able to reverse, goes for a cross body and misses. Axel able to get out of the way as Curtis Axel drops him with the DDT. As Bo Dallas now makes the target in. Bo picks up Ivar. And that. DDT, that double underhook, DDT, driving Ivar head first into the mat. But, go, I don't know what is going on, both men throwing tricks at the same time. I don't know who connected with what. As Bo picking up Ivar, just hanging him upside down on the ring post. And now Bo going to work with that boot across the face. Bo just dropping the knees onto Ivar viciously going to work what is Bo Dallas Bo just stomping away now on Ivar makes the target into Axel and the B team have shown great tag team work early on isolating the big man in Ivar keeping him away from it, his tag partner Eric and just going to work on him weakening him Weakening him, wearing him down. As Axel hits a big neck breaker. Picking up Ivar. Now is Curse Axel. And just dropping him back down with that big punch. And again, making frequent tags out of the B team. Working over Ivar, not allowing him to reach his corner. Sound strategy. As Bo once again goes for that double underhook DDT. And now Ivar. Close line and Bo over the top rope. Is this the separation he needs to make the tag? And he's able to finally reach Eric. Makes the tag. And here comes the fresh men from the Viking Raiders. And he's going straight out after Bo Dallas. With big belly to belly on the floor. Got to believe this can be the turning point for the Raiders getting that first man in. But Bo Dallas able to reverse hits the spin kick, reversing that form as well. Eric though with the reversal this time and going to work on Bo Dallas. Referees count up to four. As Eric just picking up Bo Dallas and driving him back down on the outside. Now trying to get the universe behind him, trying to get those war chants going. Referee up to seven. And now Eric sent flying into the guardrail here at ringside. Referee up to a count of eight. 
as Bo works over the leg. Nine. And my Bo Dallas not taking the count out victory. You gotta think, even with a count out, even if it was a count out victory, a win over the Viking Raiders could put the B team in title contention. I'm surprised that Bo went back out to break the count. As Eric now goes to work on Bo. But Bo once again able to get out of the way and hits that big bulldog on the outside. Referee up to five now. As Bo just jawbreaker on Eric. Now Bo just stomping away. Once again just sending Eric flying. Gets in at a count of eight. Is he going to break it this time or is he going to take the count out? No, he broke the count up again at nine. I'm surprised the B team are not taking this count out victory. But you got respected as he hits the big bulldog. Does Bo Dallas. Big punch by Bo sending Eric down once again. Irish whip. Referee up to a count of six. Bo just stalking Eric. Just went for him to get up. Referee up to seven. Eric able to reverse Bo. And I'll just send him Bo Dallas back into the ring at a count of nine. And Eric in at nine, barely surviving. Because Eric with that big back suplex. Bo trying to crawl to his corner but getting cut off. And a big belly to belly by Eric sending Bo Dallas across the ring. Eric is fired up. And now Eric has Bo leaning up against the ropes, dropping him down. And then dropping that foot across the chest of Bo. And sending them over. Big knee strike. That can be it. Is Eric going to be able to pick up the pinfall here? Referee dropping down one, two, and Bo Dallas able to kick out at two. I thought that was it. Uh, Bumping back up, Bo getting caught with that forearm. Bo sent it into the corner. Now Eric setting them up on the top rope. What has Eric got planned here? Eric now up, grabbing him, that big goat wrench, is he going to go wrench him off the top rope, goat wrench, off the top rope, that could be it, Eric's saying it's not though, he's setting up Bo Dallas for something, and oh, that full Nelson slam into the kick, that has to be it, one, two, Curtis Axel able to break it up, either trying to come off but not able to get there in time, side slam, by Eric he's calling for it but Bo able to reverse kick to the midsection spear by Dallas that could be it Bo Dallas with the spear and he gave him one count only Eric able to get the shoulder up now Bo Dallas able to make the tag to Curtis Axel even though that does not look like a legal tag to me referee come on you gotta do something about it Oh, sleeper hold by Curtis Axel. Getting broke up by Ivar. A big neck breaker by Axel onto Eric. A big strike to the back of Curtis Axel. Oh, Axel cutting off Eric with that forearm. Axel drop kick on Eric. Can Eric make the tag? He's using the ropes to get back to his feet. And Bo comes in. Eric not making the tag, but drags Bo. Irish whipping him into the corner. Bo reversing 
with the big kick and neck breaker. Got to believe Eric should have made it hard to Ivar. This ball has what has ball got planned here? Picking Eric up and dropping him with that big punch and he's setting him up. Bo Dallas, what has he got planned here? Eric though reversing and catching the foot and lifting him up with a chalk slam and once again instead of going for the cover going for the tag going for more damage knocking down Bo with that form fired up Eric Re Irish whip reversal Bo sending Eric to the corner Eric though hitting Bo with that big knee strike got wrench Dropping him across the knee, got wrench, got buster. And Eric once again, Irish ripping ball to the corner. And now stomping away at Bo in the corner, right in front of his tag partner. Is Eric going to make the tag? No. Instead, he's calling for the war chance, which allows Curtis Bo Dallas to make the tag to Curtis Axel. Eric, too busy, showbone to make the tag and he finally does as here comes Ivar Axel able to get out of the way Axel Irish whipping into the corner big punch knocking Ivar to the ground elbow by Axel Axel now once again big neck Breaker. Ivaro able to reverse, taking down Curtis Axel. Now Ivar with the big spin kick. That could be it. Instead of not going for the cover, picking up Axel and Axel able to fight out of whatever Ivar had planned. As we see Bo Dallas getting back up to the ring apron, Eric still down. As Axel has Ivar where he wants him, Eric up back to his feet and up on the apron. Ivar needs to make the tag to his tag partner. As Curtis Axel picks up Ivar and that rip cord cut, that rip cord clothesline. Ivar though able to make the tag to Eric and Eric coming in, but Axel able to cut him off straight away. And I, uh, Eric, sorry, able to fight back with those elbows to the mid section of Curtis Axel as he floats him over with that big knee strike. That has to be a one, two, only a two count. But Dallas was there to break it up by either way. Curtis Axel was able to kick out. This Axel has Eric in trouble up against the ropes. Eric dropped to a knee. Axel though with the big knee strike. Snapmare by Curtis Axel. Axel in control. Goes for the cover. That's it. The B team pick up their surprise victory on the Viking Raiders. I did not expect that to be it. As we see Eric... And Ivar on the outside, shocked at what just happened. The B team picking up the shock victory of the Viking Raiders. You gotta believe that victory will put the B team in title contention. As there looks to be continue the dissension between the Viking Raiders continues to rise. As Eric and Ivar Eric left in the ring by Ivar that disagreeing between the two tag team partners as we come back with Mickey James in the ring Our Mickey James out here to call out and humiliate someone I wonder which superstar Mickey James is talking about here
she's been watching the superstar for a long time and she's reached her limit saying that they're getting worse instead of better and Mickey James taking a problem with it I wonder which raw women's superstar Mickey James could be talking about Wow she's calling out the raw women's champion Bailey saying that Bailey isn't a deserving champion that instead of improving Bailey is just getting worse and Mickey James wants Bailey to come out and meet her in the ring of course Bailey winning the Romans championship in a fell four way last week against Becky Lynch Sasha Becky Lynch Sasha Banks and Charlotte Flair Mickey James of course is not in that matchup and you gotta believe Mickey James is feeling a bit disgruntled about that that maybe Mickey James believes she should have been in that spot instead of Bailey and with someone the experience of Mickey James maybe she should have been awarded a shot at the championship and maybe that's why she is out here calling out the raw women's champion Bailey as the two meet face to face in the ring Bailey grabbing the microphone looking to respond to the comments made about her from Mickey James Bailey saying the only reason she is out here tonight is to confront Mickey James. Well, Mickey James saying she doesn't appreciate the interruption from Bailey. But she's going to let Bailey get whatever she has to say off her chest. Whatever bothers Bailey, she's going to let her say it to Mickey James in the ring. Let her respond to the comments. Wow, Bailey calling Mickey James a fraud, saying that she doesn't want a match against the Rams champion. The same Mickey James is afraid of Bailey because she knows Bailey would beat her and embarrass her in the ring. Strong comments made from Bailey as Mickey James is a former women's champion. She's faced off against some of the best in Trish Stratus, Gail Kim. I can keep going on about the great names she has faced. And she is saying that she has faced the best and she believes she is the greatest performer in the women's division. that she deserves to be the Raw Women's Champion and you kind of can't argue with the track record Mickey James is or Mickey James has that she is one of the best women's wrestlers of all time but Bailey is the Raw Women's Champion for a reason and that the only reason people still pay attention to Mickey James is because they pity her wow strong comments there by Bailey And my Mickey James saying that she wants to face Bailey because she wants to embarrass Bailey and make her look like an idiot and take that women's title away from Bailey. What has Bailey got to say about that? And Bailey saying that she's going to make Mickey James re re repay for every single insult that Mickey James has thrown Bailey's way as soon as they get in the ring together Mickey James saying that Raw is her house and Raw is her and this is her women's division and that once she beats Bailey for the title she's gonna send Bailey packing out of Raw and the authority have got to be watching this and they've got to think when will this match happen maybe it will happen next week maybe it will happen at Backlash maybe even here tonight 
Anytime you're feeling you want a shot at the title, Bailey is saying anytime, anywhere, Mickey James versus Bailey, Raw Women's Championship, it's going down. Just Mickey James has to call her shot. And this match will be a very interesting one that I will be looking forward to seeing sometime soon in the future here on Monday Night Raw. And continuing on with Monday Night Raw, we've got some cruiserweight action as the Undisputed Era's Roddy Strong, Roderick Strong, and his shitty little boots take on Cruiserweight Champion Cedric Alexander in non-title action. And you've got to be a bit surprised Roderick Strong doing this alone. Of course, Adam Cole in his match earlier had Fish and O'Reilly by his side, Roderick Cho choosing to come alone we gotta know if things start going against strong the undisputed error will not be afraid to get involved and you got to think a win here in non-title action could put strong in position for future cruiserweight title contention And if that does happen, with Cole being in the world title match at Backlash, Fish and O'Reilly tag champs, if Strong can somehow earn himself cruise by title opportunity, then who knows, maybe the Undisputed Era's prophecy of all the members holding gold here on Raw will come true sooner rather than later. Before that happens, he must get through the Cruiserweight Champion in non-title action. He has to earn it, and it's going to take a lot to uncrown Cedric Alexander, of course, beating Humberto Carrillo and Kalisto in a triple threat ladder match last week to be crowned the Cruiserweight Champion. As the age of Alexander begins... And you got to think there's no better cruiserweight champion, no, no better champion, in fact, around than Cedric Alexander. Cedric, one of the top cruiserweights in the world, and that title around his waist proves it. Cedric and Roddy get ready to go one on one here, non title action, of course. As the referee rings the bell and we are underway. Cedric locking up with Strong. Strong though kicking him in the midsection to turn the momentum. Taking him down with the STO early on. Strong now picking up Cedric. Strong kicking Cedric. Going for that double butterfly. The butterfly suplex there by Strong. As he's Strong now stomping away at the back of Alexander. And now chop by Roderick Strong. Just picking him up. Carrying him to the corner, stacking them up in that tree of row and sending them down. Now stomping away at the back, Strong taking it to Alexander early on, working over that lower back. Of course, Roderick Strong, the messiah of the backbreaker, looking to use that lumbar check, or sorry, not the lumbar check, that end of heartache as his finisher. But... Cedric Alexander, of course, as I mentioned, the lumbar check also uses a backbreaker as his finisher in the lumbar check. So it's going to be who can really hit the backbreaker first as Strong working over that lower back of Cedric early on. Now Cedric in trouble as Roderick Strong picking him up, driving him back first onto the apron, the hardest part of the ring. Now sending Roddy into the turnbuckle is Cedric able to turn the tide as Cedric going to work now on Strong with those chops. And now Strong ducking under, spinning a kick and Strong now in control. Strong taking down Cedric with that armbar, or that arm drag, sorry. 
and I'm strong picking him up suplexing just tossing him down on the floor working over that back setting him weakening him for the end of heartache and the referee up there and Roderick Strong now following out Cedric seeing Cedric about to make it back to his feet and trying to cut him off but Cedric able to reverse Roddy and kicking him now across that midsection and a big spin and close line by Cedric Alexander has Roderick Strong where he wants him goes for the cover kick out at one not even one by Strong a strong able to turn the momentum with that big drop kick Cedric forced to roll out of the ring to catch his composure but Strong's there to cut him back off when he gets in but Cedric able to turn with that knee to the midsection spinning lariat Cedric has Roddy in trouble Cedric picking up Roddy and dropping him with that DDT as Roddy has Alexander now snapmare into that chin lock as Roddy now Cedric able to work his way out of that chin lock and a big forearm by Roderick Strong and more just tossing him dropping Alexander across down onto the mat going for the cover one two that could be it no Cedric Alexander able to get his shoulder up at the count of two Strong setting Alexander up could this be it? Is he going to be able to go for the end of our take? We want to know because Rod Cedric is able to reverse. Uh, Roddy, though, once again, is able to grab Cedric. Cedric in trouble, setting him up. Just, it just says sending him off the turnbuckle and then throwing him. But Cedric up. Lumbar check. That could be it. Cedric hitting the lumbar check. That is that it? Referee down. One, two. And Roderick Strong just barely able to get his shoulder up, able to kick out of Cedric Alexander's lumbar check, is the messiah of the backbreakers. Roderick Strong is Cedric though, stalking Roddy, setting Roddy up for something. Close line. It's falling off by a second. And a big splash into the corner. And Cedric off the rope, stuck under. And a big close line. And the kip up, and Cedric is on fire. And oh, look at this. Oh, the Undisputed Era's music are hitting. Is this what I expected? Called Fish and O'Reilly. There's no one coming out though. No Fish, O'Reilly and Cole aren't coming out. But it's the distraction that allows Roderick Strong to take advantage of the situation. Typical Undisputed Era. As now Strong hits that curb stomp. That has to be it. Roddy though. Not often for a cover. Instead of wanting more damage. But Cedric able to reverse. And hit a big brain buster. Goes for the cover. One. Two. And oh, Roderick Strong is somehow surviving. Cedric able to put that distraction by the Undisputed Era behind him and turn the momentum back into his favour. Roderick Strong's plan hasn't worked. As Cedric is back in control. As said he now picks up Roddy. And a falcon arrow, he hit the deal! But Roddy able to turn momentum back again with that takedown. Now just bow oh, that's bringing Cedric off the ropes into the back breaker. And Strong now kick to the lower back of Alexander. Alexander having to roll out. And once he's back in, he's able to grab Roddy with the uppercut. This match has been great example of white cruiserway of great cruiserway action as Roddy just throwing Cedric around the ring. But as I was saying it's just a great example of what, what cruiserweight action can bring. It's not just all about the high flying lucha libre style that we normally associate the high flying risk taking style of cruiserweight wrestling. 
these two are shown the other side, that grey technical side of cruiserweight action. As Cedric reversing Roddy, coming up with that springboard forearm, Roddy rolling to the outside. He's in danger, smartly, wisely getting out of harm's way. Cedric though, following him out, gets caught with a chop. Cedric now in trouble. As that big side suplex, dropping him head first on the outside, and Roddy getting in the face of the fans here at ringside. As Roddy now, just that surfboard, just dropping the knees of Cedric into the floor. Now sending Alexander back into the ring. Here comes Strong. What has Strong got planned? Could er, a backstabber by Roderick Strong. That could be it. The back of Alexander has taken a lot of damage in this match. But Strong going to inflict more on it. Now Strong just driving Alexander into the mat once again. Stomping on the back instead of going for the cover, which I think he should. He's going to put more damage, more pain onto that back of Alexander. But Cedric able to get out of the way, but strong able to reverse out with that DDT. But Alexander once again kipping up, but gets grabbed by Cedric or by Roderick on that end of heartache. And why isn't Strong going for the cover? He has the Cruiserweight Champion beat. But instead he wants to inflict more pain and more damage on Cedric Alexander. He wants to take Cedric out. Strong picking up Cedric. Just sending him into the corner with that forearm. As Cedric in trouble now. Set up on the top rope. What has Roderick got planned? Strong with that big German suplex off the top rope. He needs to go for a cover. That's two or three times Strong has had the Cruiserweight Champion in trouble and instead of going for the cover has opted to inflict more damage as Cedric gets out of the way. That could be costly as Cedric is setting up Strong for the brain. Buster, and that has to be it. Cedric doing the smart thing, going for the cover. One, two, three. And Cedric Alexander is your winner, and you got to feel like Roderick Strong only has himself to blame. He had help from the undisputed error, causing the distraction. And as we look at these highlights, he's had the cruiserweight champion in trouble a handful of times in this contest. But instead of going for the cover, he decides to inflict more damage. Or maybe that was his game plan all along. Non-title contest. Maybe his plan was to just damage Cedric Alexander. So that if they meet in title action soon. That Cedric's weakened. His back's already weak. But Cedric has just beat Strong. So I don't see what case Roderick Strong has for a future title shot now. So you got to think who is in line for a shot at Cedric Alexander. And his Cruiserweight Championship. And whoever it is, they have a tough task ahead. Because as Cedric Alexander just showed tonight, he has what it takes to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best of them. As we have now continuing on with Raw, the man Becky Lynch is scheduled for action against Dana Brooke here tonight. Becky already in the ring. And oh, this is what happened to Dana. Dana's been attacked by Sasha Banks. And Sasha, of course... Now coming down, it looks like we're going to get Sasha versus Becky instead of Becky versus Dana. And of course, Sasha Banks believes Becky Lynch is the reason she is not Raw Women's Champion here tonight. Of course, as I mentioned earlier on tonight when Bailey was out, that was Bailey who won the Raw Women's Championship in a fail for it. That included Becky Lynch, Sasha Banks, and of course Charlotte Flair. And there was this point in the match. Well, Becky had the disarmor on Bailey. The referee was distracted dealing with the disarmor, and ba ba uh, Sasha Banks hit the bank statement, or not bank statement, sorry, the um, bankrupt, the neckbreaker maneuver that she does use on Charlotte Flair. Had Charlotte Flair pinned for at least ten seconds, but the referee was distracted with 
the submission that he did not see the pinfall attempt and that by the time the submission attempt was over and the referee turned his attention back to B Sasha Banks uh, Sasha was unable to pick up a two count and she believes that it would have been a three and I think Sasha Banks makes a good point I think that that would have been it if the referee had been paying attention but back to the action here tonight is Becky Lynch just in control Sasha Banks done obviously taking out Dana Brooks so she can get revenge on Becky tonight Sasha driving her down with that meteora now that sleeper hold locked in by Becky Lynch Sasha able to flow over and escape as she goes uh, till the world head scissors sending the man down now uh, the boss in control with that big hurricane runner sending the man down and now uh, Sasha Banks celebrating the match hasn't won but she believes it's boss time as she brings Becky in with that big rope hanging neck breaker. Now back into the center of the ring. Goes for the cover. Only a one count. Oh, Banks. Just driving Becky. Just using the hair pull to send her down head first off the mat. Becky able to flow out. And a crucifix, not going for the cover off of it though. She's using it to get Banks down to the mat as she pulls her away into the center of the ring. Now working over the arm, trying to weaken the arm of the boss, maybe to set her up for the disarm her. As a belly to belly, that exploder suplex by Becky Lynch. And Becky pulls her to the center of the ring. Banks in trouble now, kicking it out at two though, able to survive. As now Becky grabs the arm, this armor, could this be it? This is the move that Sasha Banks believes cost her the title because the referee is distracted with. And it would have been a big uh, slap in the face to Sasha if she hadn't had to tap out to it. But she was able to escape, but Becky's still in control. As the man grabbing that sleeper hold onto the boss. Of course Sasha able to make it to the ropes. Becky still working over the arm, trying to weaken the arm for the disarmer. But Sasha able to reverse, kicking Becky in the head to the word head scissors. Now that chop across the chest of the man. And Sasha following, bringing Bailey, or Becky to the top rope. But the hurricane runner sending her back down. That could be it. Sasha Banks going for the cover of one only a one count going to take a lot more to keep the man Becky Lynch down Sasha kick to the midsection and here comes bankrupt the move she believed won her the title last week one two Becky able to kick out and now the bank statement locked in is the man gonna tap or is the boss gonna the boss able or the man able to get the elbow on the boss Sasha Banks and a big exploder by Becky Lynch the big exploder dragging her to the center of the ring going for the cover one two three Becky Lynch defeats Sasha Banks of course Becky was meant to face Dana Brooke but Sasha had decided to attack Dana before the match and replace her got to believe this is only the beginning of this feud between Becky and Sasha things are only heating up and a great matchup this was and I believe we might see them again if things continue to heat up and if they continue to get involved in each other's matches and take out their opponents as we see the bankrupt move Sasha I believes won her the title last week if it wasn't for Becky Lynch Becky Lynch able to hit the Exploder and get the victory. 
as the man beats the boss. Becky Lynch pointing at her t-shirt saying she is the man. She is the top dog here on Monday Night Raw. Male or female, she believes she is the number one superstar on Raw. And maybe a win over Sasha Banks. We've seen Mickey James call out Bailey earlier. Maybe a win over Sasha Banks could put Becky in title contention again. As we move on to our main event. Sami Zayn coming out first. Sami Zayn will face off against his good friend Kevin Owens. Of course, the only one can advance to Backlash for a World Heavyweight title matchup. The other, of course, will take place in the second chance battle royale for the IC title. The underdog from the underground, the generic luchador, Sami Zayn, whatever you want to call him. He knows Kevin Steen or Kevin Owens, sorry, all too well since Owens' days as Kevin Steen. They've wrestled all over the world, and they'll wrestle here again tonight. Some say these two are destined to fight forever, and I personally could watch them fight forever. That's just how good of matches these two always deliver. And tonight will be no different, especially with the stakes. One man will advance to a world title shot at Backlash. As here comes the prize fighter, Kevin Owens. Not afraid of a fight, not afraid to back down. He, as you see on his t-shirt, he will fight anyone and that includes his best friend, Sami Zayn. It's hard to call a winner in this one, as I've mentioned, they've wrestled all over the world many a times. Sammy has won a few, Kevin's won a few. So picking a winner, it's unpredictable. Either man could pick up the win on either on any night. So who will it be tonight? Will it be Kevin Owens? Will it be Sami Zayn? We'll find out here on Monday Night Raw which one goes to Backlash for the World Title and which one goes for the Intercontinental Title. Kevin Owens looks focused, looks ready. He's ready for a fight and of course Sammy will bring him one. As the crowd here are on their feet, they're ready. Sammy's ready, Kevin's ready. Let's just get ready. We're all ready. Ring the bell, I'm ready. And we are underway. And oh, Sammy going, getting caught straight away. With some on drop by Kevin Owens. These two wasting no times with collar and elbows. They're going straight into it. Kevin just knocking Sami Zayn down with that punch and now stomping on Sami and talking trash like only Kevin Owens can do. And Sami though, reversing with a jawbreaker. And a big Yoshi tonic, the code red, sending Kevin Owens down to the mat. And a big chop by Sami Zayn. Sami sending Owens off the rope, catching him with that big kick. As Owens rolling onto the apron trying to get some space between him and Sami Zayn. Sami though. Falling him out. And dropping him. With that backdrop on to the apron. Taking it to Owens is Sami. And a big tilt the world into a roll up. But of course on the outside can't go for the cover. But just using it to wear down Owens as he drops the knee. Once again Sami dropping the knee across the face of Kevin Owens. Owens in trouble early on sent back into the ring Sammy coming in after him Sammy now just stomping away at the back of Kevin and dropping a big elbow drop Sammy going to work with those boots but Owens gets up and we've seen Sammy hit that ver that variation of the code red earlier and now Owens with one of his own and Owens once again with that Samoan drop onto Sami Zayn dragging him towards the center of the ring and uh, Owens it, getting caught with a kick these two men know each other way too well they have a reversal for everything Sami sending Owens to the outside 
And Owens, and Sammy coming out after him, but Owens cuts him off with that big lariat. And Owens sent flying across the ring. And I'm going to work, sending them into the steps. Now it's Owen sending Sammy into the steps. Referee up to count to four. Of course, if it is a double countdown, neither men do advance. As we are up to six. As Owen sending Sammy back into the center of the ring. I'm getting caught off though. With a forearm. But Owen's able to reverse Sammy again. Irish whip. But Sammy once again having an answer. For our own, these men know each other all too well. Close line to the back of the head. And now it's Sammy once again with the stomps. And I'm out with a big European uppercut from Sammy Zayn. A big drop kick to the back. Now, Sammy working over the back with those elbows. Sammy picking up Kevin. Owen's in trouble. Hassan hits him with the elbow and grabs him with that half and half suplex. That could be it. Sammy, though, knows it'll take more to put Kevin on's away as he hits the blue thunder bomb. And instead of opting for the cover, he knows Kevin Owens. He knows what it takes to pull him away. Oh no, just wisely pulling him away from drops. Maybe taking a bit too long. Who knows? Going for the cover now. One. Only a one count. Smartly pulling Owens away from the ropes as Owens is trying to get some space between him and Sammy. But he, I think he took a bit too long dragging him away from the ropes as uh, Owens is trying to get space, gets thrown back in by Sammy Zayn. And Zayn has been in control for the most part, but Owens has had his moments as well. But if we're to talk about Picking a winner right now, I'd probably have to give it to Sami Zayn, but I may have spoke too soon as Kevin Owens hits the arm drag and now that cross face, but Zayn able to quickly get his foot across the rope. And a big niche drag by Kevin Owens, grabbing Sami Zayn and just sending him, slamming him into the turnbuckle and now onto the ground as Owens going to the top rope. Was Kevin Owens got planned a big moonsault, but Sami Zayn able to get the knees up. And now an elbow strike. Owens reverse and sends Sami into the corner. Sami in trouble. Owens cannonball sent on. And now Owens has Sami Zayn where he wants him, just stalking his prey, dragging him. To the center of the ring, but Sammy picks the leg of Owens and now is back in control. And it's Sammy who's setting up Kevin Owens for something. And oh, takes him down, floats over, Koji clutch, Koji clutch in the center of the ring. Can Owens get out, or will Sammy Zayn advance, making his best friend tap to the Koji clutch? As Sammy, I think, let go of that, realizing that it's going to. Take a bit more to pull Kevin Owens away as he hits the snapmare and headlock and going to work with those elbows on the head of Kevin Owens. Once again, picking him up into a seat position, going for a drop kick. Owens able to get out of the way and then that shoulder tackle just taking down Sami Zayn. And Owens has Sami Zayn where he wants him, just stalking his prey. And oh, he has him caught. Package pile driver. He hits it. That has to be it. Just dropping Sami Zayn on his neck and his head. One, two, three. And Kevin Owens picks up the victory with the package pile driver and advances to the world's heavyweight title match at Backlash. As we see Kevin Owens advancing. And that is all we've got time for. Hold on. What's going to go on here? Are they still going to be friends? Owens extends the hand. Sammy shakes. The friends are still together. And that is all we have got time for here on Monday Night Raw. Don't forget to tune in for Smackdown. And we'll see you here on Raw next week.